Ready Player Will. Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here today. This is the Soul Character Overview. Brand new mage coming out to Global this week. Pretty normal stuff here. The character overview, base and total stat analyses leading up to the report card. I do have some extra charts in here for some stat analysis, which hopefully you'll appreciate. The report card, we'll talk about those stats in the context of the rest of his kit. We'll then go to the general thoughts here at the bottom. We're going to kind of blend what we know about the abilities into what we've seen with the stats, and then we can go even deeper to the abilities with the passives, the counters, the job abilities, auto priority, cast times, TMR review, job-based vision card eligibility, Esper synergies, and weapon optimization. So a lot to cover. We'll kick things off. Soul is the brand new character added here to Global as a fire unit. He is the Fallen Sage, unique main job with Scholar and Rune Knight as the sub jobs. He equips staves, and he's part of the staff devout classification for vision card eligibility he equips hats cloths and accessory with a move of three jump of one as a 100 cost unit and yes the faith recommendation is definitely 97 percent unequivocally so and we jump into some of the aspects of the job itself his max range is five squares away on that main job only he does have one aoe ability and three single target abilities from a resistance standpoint starts off very strong at 35 percent to strike which is his big 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 upside here he also boasts 20 percent to slash 10% to magic with two negatives here. It's a minus 5% to missile and minus 10% to pierce. Now being a 97 faith unit, you do want to be cognizant of some of the things you can be status afflicted by. And he's got 50% resistances to both slow and disable. Those are obviously very high impact ones, but even 10% to poison, which we are going to see an uptick in here, which is a very, very good one for him. From the master ability, they've given him 10 unit res innately, 20 reaction block. And on 140, he'll get 10% strike res, which is included currently in this 35%, but also gets crit evasion of 30%, which is a very important part of his survivability as well. We'll see in a couple slides. Now, as we transition to some of the base stat analysis, I've done something a little bit different here, breaking this out. There's three different views to look at this, and I'll talk over each of these quickly as we go through them. The very top left one here, I've kind of bucketed some of these stats to give an idea of how many characters are in that bucket exactly, to get a better distribution view of, of exactly how popular or unpopular some of these areas are. And for HP, I have it split out in 250 HP increments. For this bottom left chart, this is the one you're probably used to seeing. It's just all of those numbers just charted out. And this little yellow circle is where soul lands just on the total dot plot thrown out there. And box and whisker charts aren't ones that most people are familiar with. I'll talk very briefly about what this is, just so you can get an idea when you quickly look at it. These deal with medians and percentiles. And looking at all the characters, the way this box functionally works is this very middle line here in the middle of the box is the median of all values in the data. The top and bottom of the box are the 75th percentile and 25th percentile respectively. So 50% of all units will fall into this box range these little top these little lines that go above and below units fall into those and these are technically the min and max ranges and when characters are considered outliers there's a whole statistical reason why you consider someone an outlier they end up coming out as dots here so they get excluded from the data set so characters like engelbert here are an outlier now when we look at the charts Again, just kind of analyzing all this now, Saul is above average here for base HP and falls on the higher side of this metric. Obviously, you can see that visually here on the bottom left. And even from this box and whisker chart, he's above the 75th percentile in terms of where he falls for base HP. A very unique thing for a spellcaster where most mages aren't innately this bulky out of the gate, but that's definitely part of Saul's upside. And when we look at the magic here for base magic, he is in this top tier of only him and Howl at the Heavens Ward or whatever you want to call his name. <laughs> Heaven's Blade, of two of the only units in this 425 to 450 base magic, amongst some of the highest in the game, obviously is going to be near setting the bar for total base magic. It's a very, very strong point for him overall. Now we look at base agility. Saul's basically a middle in the middle, but again, you can see the distribution here. There's a lot of characters in its 53 to 58 range in terms of base agility. He's not very far off. A little on the lower side, but there's a lot more that goes into this metric, uh, as we'll see as things go on. And then from base dexterity, definitely starts off on the lower side here where yeah way behind where many of the units kind of get congregated for base dexterity and falling outside of that 25th percentile in the lower bound of things so not a big thing for for dexterity overall but base luck is kind of the opposite here he is in this like second tier of of base luck which obviously does great things for his crit evasion as we'll talk about soon there are a couple outliers here in terms of who the luck stats are i think that's zazan immortal zazan at the top here but soul ends up being very good for innate luck which i think was very interesting now as you kind of transform those 
charts. Generally speaking, in his relation to the other units, to kind of summarize here, again, nothing that we were terribly surprised by in seeing those. The agility and the dexterity are kind of a step back, but not the end of the world on those stats, because when you do incorporate some of the board nodes, the mastery abilities, there's only a couple changes here overall. He does keep most of his luck stat. He does get a very nice bump on the agility side of things. They give him 13 points on the board for agility, which is definitely above average. So the absolute salvage where he ends up innately. It takes a small step back on the magic stat, but he's still very strong in that regard and will definitely be that strong once you start equipping passives. Now, as we kind of go further into here, this is just looking at agility, making sure that you have the 15% and 8% main and sub vision cards he comes in here to run 79 agility on both and does not have a passive to boost it so overall he is not on the stronger side of agility and again kind of that same distribution this top one here is without passives this one's with passives and i tend to look at this very bottom green chart because a lot of characters do tend to try to get their agility as high as possible for turn order reasons and from that regard soul is simply just average right in the middle of this distribution here which totally fine but obviously want to be aware of it now for crit hit and crit avoid similar to the dexterity stat here being very low the crit hit is non-existent basically he's got no crit hit nodes to bump it up definitely not a part of his damage amplification but the crit avoidance rate he does get 30 percent from that uh, 140 and so he is very very high definitely way above average here with that and so that's a big part of him avoiding taking excess damage is reducing the amount of critical hits definitely a strong point for him now for the accuracy, he does uh, start off with, I would say, average accuracy. It's fair. It's not great. Maybe just a smidge below average. He does technically have an accuracy passive that'll give him 20%, which does put him in a higher tier, but he does have a guaranteed hit that you don't have to rely on that if you don't want to. But overall, not necessarily a strong point for accuracy, but he's got some tools to deal with it should you want to lean that way. But overall, I'd say it's a relative weakness when going against top tier evade units in the game and then for an evasion perspective from himself he actually is technically on this little gradient if you will of what could potentially be evaded if you were to min max everything in terms of luck scaling equips i wouldn't consider him an evade unit but if you are running fire which is very much tuned for evasion there might be something there that a very inaccurate team could miss him if you gear him that way but probably not recommended i'm sorry definitely not recommended but we'll get to the report card here now. So effective HP overall, going with a B plus here. Now he's got six defense innately, no spirit, no AOE res, and 10 unit res. You can get another 12 unit res on a passive should you decide to equip it. Maybe not always, but it's there should you want it. Overall effective HP, though we saw that base HP is very, very high. Just in terms of the broad scheme of the game, this is a, a strong point for him. But the survivability, going with an A here, and there's honestly too much to talk about. We'll, we'll cover it more in the general thoughts in the next slide, but the survivability ability in addition to the effective hp is very strong the damage going with an a plus here up to 90 spirit pen very easily in a variety of ways 40 magic res pen poison influence which adds damage over time in the battle huge magic stat to go with it there's a lot that he can do well and he's got a couple typeless abilities too so even if you stack fire resistance he can still get through it in other ways in terms of damaging you so overall a plus for damage the agility going with a c as we saw he's kind of right there in the average distribution of things i wouldn't call it a strength or weakness it's basically just average the accuracy i'm going with a c here as well basically average accuracy the 20 accuracy on a passive certainly is nice 100 guaranteed hit on his lowest ap ability on the main job i wouldn't worry too much about hitting evade units it's not going to blow them out of the water but overall accuracy basically average as well the evasion going with a c minus here too as we saw i wouldn't consider him an evade unit could surprise you if you were gearing for no accuracy at all and he's in a fire evasion team i could see that being a thing but really not something to rely on the movement i'm going with a d here no movement capabilities at all he's that move three jump of one at all times but the auto ease of use i'm going with an a minus here the damage is so straightforward it's a relatively easy buff rotation where he's got a physical barrier his teammate buff single buff there's not a lot to think about in terms of min maxing what he needs to do he's just a very solid unit right out of the box for the game disruption of an a he's got a huge impact here right to the current meta of alaya and strike and what he has for that innate strike res and even for the foreseeable future he's a top tier magic unit that sets the bar for many in terms of what he can potentially do the passive abilities here going with an a superb passive selections for what you want to do the counter ability is also going with an a minus here excellent main counter for what we're seeing in the game and what we're probably going to see for the foreseeable future the overall job and kid here going with an a plus of very few weaknesses does so much damage with an excellent amount of x factors for what he brings for utility for 
A final grade of an S. Yes, this is the second time in recent memory. Alaya was the one more recently, but he is right on par, if not even above her. He's a grossly exceptional magic unit who will set the bar for quite some time. There are very few weaknesses to this character overall in the current existence of the game. The S grade is absolutely deserved. He is going to blow people away when you are not ready for it. And let's talk a little more about why I have that S grade. So first, an exceptional damage powerhouse. 30 magic res pen, and 40 Spirit Pen on the passive. You can get higher than that if you wanted with another passive ability, so you can get up to 80 uh, Spirit Pen, not even including Trust Stone passives yet. He does have a Magic Barrier Break on his Select 2 ability, so barriers won't work against him. He's got the Poison Status Effect on an ability and his Limit Break, so two different ways to have inflict it. And one of his abilities, you get an extra modifier if they are poisoned, so that's not only damage over time, but increased modifier damage. His Limit Break has Shell Removal, so you can't use that against him. It's also a 25 percent fire in peril so he will nuke you for extra fire damage he's got three total typeless abilities uh, that don't rely on fire modifiers to bypass any kind of fire resistance so even if you went 100 percent fire res against him he uses one of these typeless attacks that only scales off magic res and spirit he's still going to nuke you for the damage he wants to do and he's a, a, a full he gets full mage ap which is 75 percent of his total starting ap so he's got basically full ability uptime that you don't have to worry about him like running out of ap he is just going to keep going at you and he we'll talk about a couple points here has an healer ai that he's got a lot of tp abilities that he can still restore some ap mid fight if he does some of that healing now the great survivability which is part of that tanky magic dps innately as we've seen from some of these stats he's got a damage reduction mechanic that the larger the aoe it is the less damage he'll take from it we'll talk more about that in a little bit he's got crazy strike resistance and on the next slide we'll talk more he does have a healer ai in the mid fight and fryavia jb79 brought up as a great example that if he's low or a teammate's low he does not only have a self-heal ability but one of his offensive abilities has an after effect uh, for a teammate heal and a self-heal so there's a lot of sustain there and he is protect capable with a 7500 hp physical barrier on buff these two in conjunction we've seen characters like addison ray be very strong with that double on one ability this is also very strong for him and the amazing utility that aoe protectability is, is not only for him but for his teammates it's strike res of 15 percent at minimum if it's a fire unit it's 35 percent strike res you can decrease enemy ap by 15 percent on his select two ability he's got dispel courage on another select two ability yes he's got two of them in his kit he's got the healing of 120 percent aura on an ability and healing power down of 50 on a giant diamond aoe on his limit break so there's a ton of utility to affect the team fight there the staff devout class that he's a part of is an excellent class for vision card purposes for rainbow parties which he does excel at and he does have good pve potential here we've got some double hits he's got those imperils as we've seen that magic units in terms of guild raids in particular do give bonus damage to these magic units for their chaining potential and he is absolutely part of that where fire is already very stacked for magic chainers he fits right into there very very nicely now, let's look at the Anti-Strike very quickly in a few different builds. He does have 35% innately, 8% from his weapon. If you were to go with Bahamut here, which is my Esper recommendation, it's another 15% Strike Res. If you wanted to go extra hard here and go with the Rain Vision card, which is 15% Strike Res on the unit who's equipping it, that puts you at 73% innately, which is very important because you cannot dispel that. It's 73% at all times. Now, he does have that buff for another 35%, which will put you above that 100% threshold it'll put you at 108 percent and you can do this different ways too if you didn't want the rain vision card and you use let's say phoenix instead for that extra strike res you could still keep him around that 68 percent you're still at null strike resistance for any of those strike characters and if you wanted to go really nuts here you obviously could still incorporate the vision card the asper phoenix there's other vision cards you could use overall the strike res is exceptionally strong that yeah he can still get semi beat by bridal alaya just a little bit slower than other units but against those other strike units ed perrine alphonse they're probably hitting for one damage a lot of the time so he's an exceptionally good anti-strike unit now for the passive abilities urisha's guidance is a must-have that's 24 percent magic off that very high base magic as we saw spear pen of 40 on that same ability 30 magic res pen on that same ability and healing power 15 four abilities up and down that are exceptionally good all together and even when you consider these other ones here heliarch's thoughts is another favorite of mine decreased chance of being targeted of five and 12 unit res i absolutely love that 
and sharp mind i even like for some of the maybe future tank busting potential if you have someone who's got a ton of spirit you can easily get him to 80 spirit pen between these two passives that's also where the 20 percent accuracy comes from but preliminary chan i am going to come back to this is that decrease 200 cast time I do think there's a niche where that works. You don't need it all the time, but I wouldn't keep that one off the table. And although Scholar's Knowledge is another accuracy one, I don't think it's nearly as good as Sharp Mind, so I would never use the two of them in conjunction with each other. And we look at the counter abilities. Astral Shield here is that 70% chance to counter Slash and Strike Damage. is a 40% reduction. Very strong here. The other ones are fine, but that's really a big one there for reducing incoming damage against those top two meta damage types at the moment. And then we look at the main job buffs. Now, his primary buff is the teammate buff here. That gives them the 7,500 barrier to protect, and it's also that strike res for teammates. This self buff, which is untranslated, is that mechanic where the larger the AoE, the less damage you'll take from it. I don't know the percentages off the top of my head at the moment, but this is obviously a great one for the extra crit evasion, which already is a strength of his, and the extra 40% magic, which he'll get a ton of. These are overall two very, very good buffs on the main job. But we look at the main job offensive abilities. Now, again, there's only one of them here that has a cast time on it, which is why that passive ability for the cast time reduction, probably not necessary unless in some unique situations but overall these are uh, five squares of range five squares away at most he's got two different select two abilities going through these one by one the 15a abilities that guaranteed hit typeless attack damage the exhaust heat is that aoe ability that increases the modifier if the person is poisoned and it gives them a chance to poison and even has more of a chance to poison if they have ap restore haste or berserk on them which we've seen quite commonly the inferno of destruction and chaos is a two selection of breaking magic barriers and chaos seal and i'll talk about chaos seal in a second but it's also a decrease of ap on that double hit ability and then salvation is the other select two that's dispel courage and will also do some kind of hp recovery and just looking at those two in particular so the inferno of destruction and chaos that chaos heal is a teammate heal where when he uses this ability he'll heal a teammate within four squares away for 120 percent mod the salvation ability is a self heal that should you kill an enemy he will restore 120 percent mod of whatever his magic is which is very high he's got 15 healing power which also amplifies that amount of healing that he's got two different very cool self-sustained mechanics here for not only a teammate but also for himself on both of these offensive abilities and then we get to the limit break here this is a nice giant diamond aoe with a lot going on it's dispel shell it's dispel courage in that aoe and also if they are poisoned which they likely are at that 67 percent chance there's additional effects that it's not only an attack debuff of 40 percent it's also decreased healing power 50 and that 25 percent fire in peril so there's a lot going on here on this limit break that's going to you know massacre a group of enemies when we look at the cast time breakpoints just on that one ability in the main job and even one of the sub job here that we'll see on the next slide if you don't do any cast time reductions at all them at 320 they're both the same cast time will take you four ticks very long very risky considering alaya also has that you know cancel ability and jamming thrust is very prevalent nowadays too if you went with only 200 either from his passive or trust own passive that does move both of these down to three ticks so i do recommend that at the minimum as a trust own passive if you went with both to reduce it by 400 that does further increase it to a two tick cast time i think it might be a little bit overkill because i don't love that passive ability on him in lieu of the other two but it is something to lean into and just know where the adding an esper here doesn't actually change the next break point at all two is the fastest that you'll get unless you're using something like sage staff which is 250 cast time down not 200 in that case yes that will change the break point but overall just something to bring some visibility to because when we look at the next sub drop here for the fallen sage this is the ability we're looking at for chaos nova where on this single cast ability it's a typeless damage attack it's another spirit pen of 40 and magic res pen of 40 so you're talking at near 100 percent penetration on this ability it's a great tank busting ability but the power of chaos is really good one here where it's a decreased chance of being targeted of three it's a self heal of 210 percent and it will restore ct when hp is less than 30 percent this is a great mid fight thing for him where he'll just self heal himself to keep going and he's so bulky that it will still allow him to continue the fight a lot longer i don't hate some of the other sub jobs but this is probably my favorite one but scholar obviously i really like this for the fire summoning camp it does have a cast time on on it though which you've seen is very unreliable for teammate buffing but the rest of this i don't really like anything here that he doesn't necessarily already have 
I think the buffs on the main job are superior. This is okay, but it's probably more niche. And then the Rune Knight, even still a little more niche here, where yes, it's kind of nice that it's, you know, some slash type damage to throw into the magic type. It's another form of dispel shell, should you want it in addition to the limit break. But when I just consider what his sub job is compared to the Rune Knight sub job, I think the other one offers a little more. Now, this one's nice to have, but probably not my favorite overall. And we look at the TMR view. This is a cloth type accessory. I love this. You're talking 11 defense. I love the ability here to double cast where it's a human killer of 20 for three turns and it's a decreased being chance of targeted of six. This is actually the effect that I was looking for for Irvine where that human killer will affect the follow-up attack in a very material way. I love this TMR. Obviously it's a cloth so it's a little limiting that you can only equip one of them that you have to put this in the TMR slot but overall I think this is a really solid TMR to add into the game for what it offers. Obviously the hate mechanic being a really cool one as well now we get into the job based vision cards you know, staff devout is looking in a really good right now where obviously they have some area res on a magic oriented vision card they have a couple different kinds of agility boosting ones not only with the full metal card which is unit res as well but you have on the soul vision card agility percent as well but you could also obviously go with the black rose land of vision card or the rams of vision card it's not a, a impossible one to replace but there's a lot of other cards here in terms of the coral vision card with the unit res that it has as well that there's a lot of iterations of teams you can potentially put him into that staff devout is a very good rainbow class overall and saul absolutely benefits from that now for the esper synergies to me you know want to focus on human killer and magic attack because he does have those few typeless abilities that if you go too heavy on fire attack up not all the abilities will get that fire attack up but human killer magic attack magic percent is a good one i think accuracy is also important just to make sure that you kind of hedge a little bit so he's not missing targets that he shouldn't be and the rest is matchup specific if you want him to be exceptionally tanky against one kind of enemy but i think bahamut is the de facto best one here not only for the strike res that it has on it but for the magic percent and for the human killer and the agility everything down the middle this is the best in slot esper for him i do think that dark siren has a good case to be made where there are some things there where dark siren does have accuracy nodes it's the reaction block, it's got magic attack up, and it's got the debuff weakening effect. There's a board there that I like a lot for Dark Siren. But I also do think just my old accuracy espers, Ramu is great. He's got strike res and a magic attack on his as well. Shiva's great for the pierce res that he has a negative weakness to, and she's also accurate. And then Typhon also has the accuracy and the magic percent pure notes. So overall, these are also good selections. And I do think Phoenix is an interesting choice here because it is the highest strike res you can get. So it's got defense, but it also has fire attack. So should you want to do something specific with your Agility or his bulk phoenix is one that i wouldn't leave off the table either and i'm sure there are others but these are the ones that immediately come to mind for my resonation priority now look at the weapon optimization i think there's a couple things to pick from here this is the unique weapon they gave to him this is that eight percent strike res 30 reaction block rate magic attack of 15 i think this was good for some of that anti-strike potential but to me this eight percent strike res isn't much higher than what you get on a trust stone passive you could easily still make that rune and even the reaction block rate of 30 you can get 20 on a trust stone pass so it's it's a nice increase but i don't think it's strong enough to make it a de facto best in slot weapon for him because i do think even something like the doom twilight is not the worst one where it's technically a higher magic it's competitive with a 30 reaction block rate the magic attack is just a smidge down but you have an accuracy build here of 24 with 10 accuracy on it too that this isn't all that far off uh just very slightly different of what it tends to offer him but i do think the wizard rod is still another great one too where that ct up when he gets below a certain amount of health 20 magic attack but the max damage here if he's going to be nuking people potentially you do want some of that the damage cap increase potentially i think this is still a great weapon overall and then from a tmr perspective i actually like staff of providence here again when you talk about staff options on the tmr slot this is 10 unit res so you're kind of min maxing some of your stats you know i think this is very valuable particularly against someone like alaya where her main ability is a unit scaling ability so you can either go 8% strike res or 10% unit res, and that 8% strike res, she's going to cleave through 60% of it because of her penetrations. She's going to cleave through none of this, though, with the 10% the fully impenetrable. So I like this a lot for similar reasons. I think you have a lot of options to choose from, but that's the sole review in a nutshell. Hopefully you can see why this character is such a incredible unit for setting the bar for magic units not only for bulk but for damage but for utility but for vision card synergies for rainbow play for weapon min maxing that he's got a couple options there's so much to do with him that anyone pulling this character is going to get an immense amount of benefit from him he's definitely going to be a, a hurdle to deal with for quite some time but that's my thoughts for now thanks for watching i'll talk to y'all later